All right, so we're going to get started with an overview of looking at what types of screws are on different types of cars. So here we have basically a, an almost stock um, MRO3. And as you can see, most of the screws are the Kyosho self-tapping screws. Uh, these are um, actually crosshead. They're actually not Phillips, they're GIS, but you can use a, a Phillips driver for the most part. Um, generally, when you start upgrading screws, you'll switch to a different type of head. Um, so here is a PN uh, 2.5 chassis. Um, you can see that a lot of the screws have been upgraded, uh, mostly hex head, hex socket head, 1.5 millimeter, which is kind of a standard, a um, couple of Phillips, um, different flat head, button head screws around. And then lastly, here's a GLR GT. And once again, mostly socket head screws, um, flat heads, button heads, uh, depending on where they go. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different screw head types. Um, so first off is the Phillips. So you need to put the, the Phillips in. Um, you do need to push downwards with the Phillips in order to engage the head correctly. And if you don't push downwards as you torque it, um, the driver will cam out and eventually can chew up the screw head. Um, so, you know, you do need to apply downward force on this Phillips while you're screwing it. You don't want it to slip. The other type of screw head is a hex head. Uh, these are generally much easier to deal with. Um, there's no taper in the socket head, so you, you don't really need to push down as hard um, to get good torque and you just need to turn for the most part. Um, so as you as you upgrade screws, you generally want to go more towards the hex socket heads instead of the Phillips heads. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that you use the correct size of driver in the screw. So for instance, especially with Phillips screws, you want the one that fits snugly. Um, for instance, this is a Phillips number one screw and you see it's a pretty um, tight, secure fit into the screw. Now if I used a smaller one, say this is a Phillips um, P0, you can see that you know there's a lot of um, play in here and a lot of wobble and if you try to use this driver you probably can get to screw in and out but you have to push down really hard and you'll start to basically chew up the screw head um, and destroy it eventually. Um, the same goes with the, the hex drivers. Um, I think for the most part, you know, use the correct one. I've seen people use English hex drivers on these metric screws or like a 1.3 into 1.5. And if you don't have the correct fit, it eventually will round off the recess of the head and eventually destroy your screw. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at the different types of threads and screws. So this is very important. I've seen a lot of people confuse these two and use them in the wrong places. Um, so the, the left three over here, as you can see, they have pretty deep um, coarse threads and they're really designed to tap into plastic when there are no threads in the plastic already. So very, very important. You never use these into any kind of metal. If you use them into a pre-tapped metal hole, it basically will destroy the the metal and the screw and it'll probably get jammed along the way and you can't get it out. So once again, these are plastic tapping screws only for use in plastic. So the right side here, you can see these threads, they're very fine and kind of shallow. So these are machine screws. So they're primarily designed to use in pre-tapped metal. So basically if you have a metal part with threads already present in it, you'll screw these in and they take very little force to drive in the metal. <clears throat> um, so generally whenever I use a machine screw into metal, I will always add Loctite, either the purple or the blue works. Uh, as in almost all cases, eventually um, due to vibration, the metal screw will eventually loosen 
and work its way out. So you want to use Loctite on metal to metal connections. Um, you almost never, yeah, actually never use Loctite on plastic screws. Basically the, the self-tapping screws, um, they lock themselves in the plastic and will not come out during vibration. So metal screws, only use in, for the most part, only use a metal. So there are occasions where, you, where like I personally use the machine screws into plastic and that is mainly for certain applications in certain spots where I know I will be taking the screw in and out regularly um, for maintenance and changing things. Um, so if you use a plastic tapping screw in and out many, many times, say like dozens of times, eventually the plastic will get worn away uh, because you're cutting threads and eventually the, the plastic threads will wear out and you'll actually strip the hole. So a machine screw um, the threads are much less aggressive and so if you're going into plastic uh, it won't chew up the threads as much and if you do it back and forth um, lots of times it won't damage the plastic over time. Um, so certain applications for instance I use them on things I change frequently like the uh, disc damper plate which I need to maintain or a T-plate screw and just basically anything I know I'll be taking in and out regularly, I'll use a machine screw into plastic. Um, but once again, never use the plastic screw into metal. Um, and machine screws can mainly be used to metal, um, but depending on the application, can be used in plastic as well. Okay, so let's take a look at different head types. So the left two here are flat heads. As you can see, there's a cone shaped taper and the actual top of the screw is very flat on the top and the right here are button head, pan heads, and a socket head. So the bottom surface of this, the head which basically clamps is flat but then the top head is rounded or either sticks up. So it's, it's very very important you know to use the right type of screw in the right place. Uh, basically, you can't interchange these two. They both have different purposes uh, depending on what you're trying to attach with the screws, uh, where it goes, and uh, what it's clamping. So, to take some examples, um, we'll take a look at this card here. So, this guy has a combination of flathead and buttonhead screws on the bottom. So, you can see right here we have a flathead screw. So I'm going to take this out, just take a look. So you can see that there's actually a recess here, which is a cone-shaped recess, which fits the cone-shaped um, taper of the flathead. And when you screw it down, then it ends up flush and nothing sticks out. So, you know, you use the, the right head, it fits fine. But if you end up putting, say, a button head in here, so I've seen this happen, you put a, let's say, button head screw, and as you notice, even though it kind of fits, the screw is now sitting up high, and it's not really flush with um, the intended intended surface, and it's sticking out. So that's bad. Um, it can hit something depending on something going on top, or it's going to, you know, protrude. So the other, you know, the inverse of this is if you use a um, flathead screw where you want to put a button head screw. So right now this, these screws holding this T-plate are button heads. Um, so I've seen people put in flatheads here and that's bad also for another reason. So we'll take this button head out and so the other thing the flathead screw does in addition to being more flush on the top is it has a, a taper so basically as it goes in there's a wedge and so as the screw goes down it's going to try to center basically the screw into the part or the part to the screw um, so that helps if you're trying to locate something but if you're just trying to clamp something without trying to locate it then the flathead is going to be fighting that so if I put a flathead screw say here so obviously, first thing you see is it's not quite sitting flat. Um, 
you're not really clamping effectively on the whole surface of the part. So you've only got a little point of contact kind of in the ID of the screw clamping the part, okay? Um, versus if you use the correct button head, the whole flat bottom surface of the screw is clamping it. Um, and then secondly, you are kind of forcing that screw hole to match the cone taper of the flathead. And since that's not perfectly aligned, if you end up putting two flatheads, for instance, they may fight each other and the holes may try to shift and actually distort the T-plate, which I've seen happen. And the T-plate's not sitting flat, which means your, your car is gonna be weird. Um, <clears throat> so here's another place, um, right? This is a flathead screw. Um, you can see it fits into this um, recess counterbore in the, the motor mount. Um, so I've used a button head screw here, then once again you wouldn't be clamping on the correct surfaces of the motor mount and the button head would only touch on the outer surfaces and not the taper of the screw. So very, very important to use the correct head type depending on the application and where it goes um, to make sure the screw is doing what it should do and not distorting your part or causing other weird issues. All right, so one last topic here is basically uh, screw lengths. Um, so you do need to make sure you use the right length of screw for the right application. Um, obviously, if it's too long, um, it won't go all the way down and won't clamp what you're trying to clamp um, or fasten. And then the inverse here is if it's too short, then you won't get enough um, threads. So there's a variety of screw lengths depending on the car. I think the most common are this uh, M2 by four millimeter length and M2 by six. Um, of course, there's some shorter and longer depending on the car. Um, so just give you an example of using a screw that's too short in the right place. So here we have a, a motor mount um, that gets clamped on and we'll take the correct screw um, that goes into the hole and you can see how many threads are left after you put it through. So as you use the correct screw and put it in, you can see after it's screwed all the way down, you get a fair number of threads. So at, at minimum you want to aim for three, four, five threads sticking out which go into your part, um, which provides enough uh, clamping. So, let's say if you put the wrong screw in there. So I'm putting in a shorter screw in the same part. And so as you can see, this screw is a little bit too short. Uh, if you look at the number of threads actually going into the, the mating part, there's maybe two um, or three at most. And that's not quite enough. If you tighten this too much, basically you'll pull the threads out and strip them in the, in the mating part. Um, so this one's too short. So make sure your screws are the right length. There should be, you know, minimum three, four or more threads um, going into the mating part. Um, otherwise, if you tighten it too much, you'll basically just strip that threaded hole um, and you'll be in trouble. A little bit more about Thread locker, so as I mentioned, you don't want to use thread locker if the screw is going into plastic uh, ever. So the plastic itself will keep the screw from loosening. Um, you know, most importantly, a thread locker can actually attack the plastic and cause it to crack. Uh, basically, there's certain plastics. Um, the ABS on the most Kyosho chassis uh, is actually um, very susceptible to thread locker stress cracking. So if you put it on there, it'll chemically attack the plastic um, make it brittle and basically crack with very little force. Um, so don't use thread locker in your plastic. Um, other plastics like nylon, glass field nylon, which the uh, PN chassis is made of, um, and GL and others, usually nylon's fairly safe from thread locker, but you still don't put it in. Um, carbon fiber is also safe. It won't stress crack, but, stress crack, but definitely the Kyosho chassis uh, thread locker if you get it near any plastic, it's bad. Um, even for instance, if you're putting the thread locker in a metal part, um, 
and the metal part touches a plastic part, the thread locker can still overflow and get into the plastic and cause it to crack uh, if it's adjacent or near that. So different colors of thread locker. Um, the most common one, which I use, is a purple. This is the lowest strength one. Um, keeps the screws from loosening, but is easily removable with tools. Um, the next one up is blue. I don't usually use this. Uh, this is a higher strength. Um, you can still get it out with tools, but it's much stronger, more difficult to get out. And then um, there's a red one, which is even stronger, and I never use that. It's basically almost permanently um, putting the fastener in there and you can't really get it out. Some other problems with screws in the plastic uh, that happens as you use them, uh, take them in and out, is that or you over tighten them as you strip the plastic and your threads are gone. Um, so first thing you know, I recommend is if you know you're going to take the screw in and out a lot um, to not use a plastic screw but use a machine screw with the finer threads. Uh, basically the finer threads won't chew into the plastic as much and won't damage it if you need to take it in out. So Areas like the body mount or the T-plate or the disc damper which you know you've been taking out in and out frequency, um, try using machine screw instead of a plastic tapping screw. So if you do happen to strip the thread in plastic, um, you have a couple options depending on what the plastic is. So for the Kyosho chassis, it's uh, ABS plastic. Um, so what I found works pretty well is to get some of this stuff <clears throat> at Home Depot. It's basically ABS pipe cement, happens to be black, which is nice. Uh, it's basically ABS dissolved in solvent. Um, you take a toothpick and say, you know, dab it into the hole um, that's been stripped, uh, let it, you know, cure overnight and go back in with a small drill bit, smaller than the screw, um, to drill that out to the hole and then you can have enough threads in the walls of the hole to grab a screw uh, threads. The other options here, are, um, epoxy, 5 mm epoxy, filled epoxy. Um, also sticks pretty well to ABS um, in a thicker uh, cyanoacrylate. Um, this is not thread locker, uh, but cyanoacrylate uh, gap filling grade. You don't want the uh, thin stuff, and this will also uh, work sometimes if you're in a pinch. Now, if you're in a different type of plastic, like a um, glass filled nylon, your options are more limited. Um, things don't really stick well, so the ABS solvent won't stick well to nylon, um, epoxy doesn't really stick well to nylon either, so you're kind of left with um, using a cyanoacrylate um, in there and hopefully it'll be able to create enough threads. Um, in general, nylon is uh, much harder to strip. You really have to, you know, overdo it or abuse it uh, for the most part.